Hi again, I'm picking up on page 71. We were talking about common stock and preferred stock. Uh, please remember, by the way, that there are two ways to make money when you own stock. Uh, one of them is to buy it at a low price and hopefully sell it later at a high price. We call that uh, capital gain or appreciation. Uh, the second way is through the receipt of dividends, okay? And remember, not every stock pays a dividend. Uh, so dividends are what we're exploring right now when we're talking about uh, what happens with cumulative preferred stock? Okay, here's the deal. Uh, so this company has 10,000 shares of cumulative preferred, and it's $50 stock. That's not the price. That is how much that you will receive per share as a dividend. Okay, that's the dividend amount. A preferred shareholder, unlike a common shareholder, knows how much they will get if and only if a dividend is declared. doesn't mean it will be. So now this company has common shareholders and it has preferred shareholders. And 10,000 shares at $50 a share means every single year, the um, preferred shareholders should get $500,000. If they get none of it or just part of it, then anything that is unpaid has to be held in arrears and made up for in future years, for all years, until they are all caught up. All right, and only then will the common shareholders get anything. Sounds like a sweet deal, right? Yeah, but there's a hook, there's a catch to it. So this company is going to issue no dividends at all in 2013, 400 grand in 2014, and then 2 million in 2015, they really start building some traction, and 2.8 million in 2016. So this exercise, and I'm gonna want you to do one of these for me later on, so I want you to watch what happens, okay? This is all on page 71 at the bottom. And for some reason, my stocks aren't, my slides aren't advancing. There we go. Okay, let me just make that a tiny bit bigger for you. Just like that. Okay, so as you see up here, this is how I like to table it out. Table it out any, any way you like, but this is what I recommend. So first I go across for all four years, as you can see, and I list the dividends. Zero, 400 grand, two million, and 2.8 million. Okay, now we have to decide who's gonna get what. Okay, so the preferred shareholders every single year are entitled uh, to 500000 And this is cumulative stock, so if something doesn't get paid, we can't just forget about it. So since none of it, no dividends are being paid in 2013, the whole half a million is held in arrears. There's nothing left for the common dudes, okay? Now 2014, now the company's starting to build a little bit of ability to pay dividends, so the board declares a $400,000 dividend. All right, the preferred shareholders are still owed 500K from last year, and now another 500K for this year. So right now, at the end of 2014, they're entitled to a million bucks. 400,000, therefore, goes entirely to them. And it's not enough to erase the whole arrearage either, so they're owed a million, they get paid 400,000, so we end 2014 with arrearages of 600,000. Again, the common shareholders get nothing, zero, zilch, okay? 2015, okay, now the company's really starting to pay. They issue a dividend of two million. Who gets it? How much do the preferred shareholders get? All right, they are still owed 600,000 from the end of last year and another half a million for 2015. So now they're entitled to $1.1 million in total. We've got to catch them totally up. And it looks like we can do it. Okay, 1.1 is the number, so um, we are going to take that 2 million, 1.1 of it goes to the preferred folks, and that's going to leave 2 million minus 1.1 million, that's going to leave half a million dollars for the common shareholders. Okay, now finally 2016, the dividend of 2.8 million is declared, all the arrearages have been wiped out, as of the end of 2015, the preferred folks are all caught up, okay, but... Uh, how much do they get for 2016 now? They get $500,000. They always get the same amount. So out of the 2.8 million, 500K goes to them. There's no rearage to worry about. And that's $2.3 million available for the common shareholders. All right. Preferred shareholders took less risk early on, and it looked like at first they had a better deal. They were getting their money first. But here's the gotcha. It's got a ceiling on it. Okay, the most the preferred shareholders will ever get is going to be half a million dollars. But now the company's really making their common shareholders rich.
the preferred shareholders do not get to share in that. Okay? They took less of a gamble early on, but their return is ceilinged. The common shareholders are not. So now these, these, these people, the common shareholders, are now rearing to go. They'll get rich. Okay? So that's the trade-off of risk and return. And that's how, common, how cumulative, rather, preferred stock works. Okay? So watch that year 2015, okay? Remember, at the end of 2015, the preferred folks were entitled to another half a million, and they needed 600 to square them for the end of 2014. So they get 1.1 million, okay? All right, very good. Uh, let me see. Um, another way you could look at that is if you add up the three years for the preferred shareholders, how much were they entitled to for the first three years? Three times half a million is 1.5 million. How much did they get paid in the first two years? 400,000, okay? 1.5 million minus 400,000, again, means 1.1 million is going to clear them up at the end of 2015, no matter how you do it. Now you can see that there's no limit on the common shareholders and it's their turn to shine. Okay, very good. Um, I talked briefly about stock market reporting. There are many key metrics that we have to follow about our stock. A lot of people get very manic about it. They have to sit there and rush to read the Wall Street Journal or look at uh, their, their uh, holdings every single day. A good investor doesn't necessarily do that. Warren Buffett himself, he is what we call a value investor. I'll explain more about what that is later. But Warren Buffett buys stock, large blocks of stock, and in his own words, he buys it in companies he doesn't have to worry about looking at for a few years. He puts his money there. He doesn't have to do any Monday morning quarterbacking. He just lets it sit there and grow. Okay? Now, please remember, a wise investor is one who uses the long-term time as his or her ally. Okay? Jumping in and out of the market for short-term trading. Some people know how to make money doing that. It's not recommended. Okay? Time is our ally. All right, what do I use? <clears throat> there are many available. Uh, I like yahoo.com. Okay, so when you're looking at a, an equity, go to yahoo.com, and then I think it's, if you look over to the left, you're going to see some hot links, and I think it's the fourth one down. It says finance. Click on finance. Okay, Yahoo Finance is going to tell you everything about a company that you could possibly need to know. All right, so... I'm just going to take a moment and go do it. So I'm going to come over here to show you how that works. So I'm going to type in, okay, yahoo.com. Come on. Wait for it. There it is. Okay. Finance. Okay. Sometimes I'm using Firefox, so I have it across the top. If you're using uh, another uh, avenue like Explorer, it will be listed down the side. Okay, mine is different than I described only because I'm using Firefox. Okay, so I clicked on finance and I get this. Now there's, you're looking at the tip of an iceberg here and that's plenty for most investors. As you know, most of an iceberg is what you can't see that's under the water. That's where the bulk is. And there's a big, big underwater portion of this iceberg here. So Yahoo Finance can tell the layperson everything he or she could want to know. In this box you see right here, search for news, symbols, or companies, okay? Let's say you're looking for Coca-Cola. You type in Coca-Cola's ticker symbol, all right? Do you know what Coca-Cola's ticker symbol is? Most people don't. It's K-O, okay? Now, see, it's pretty smart. It assumes I'm looking for the Coca-Cola company. Now, let's say you did not know that Coca-Cola's ticker was K-O. What do I type in? Start typing in Coca-Cola. Okay? Right away, Yahoo Finance says, this person's probably looking for Coca-Cola. It's going to give you the ticker. Either type it in or just click on it. Wait for it. There it is. All right, this is the lead page for Coca-Cola. What you see right there is the price of Coca-Cola as of the most recent trade. Uh, that a willing buyer and willing seller were, were, uh, were making, and that is 45.89. That means $45.89 will buy you one share of Coca-Cola's stock, okay? There's all kinds of in interesting information here that an average investor 
definitely a person finishing up my class would want to know. Okay, and we'll get into some of those after. So that is how you look up Coca-Cola. Come on back here, let's look another one up. One, one McDonald's, their ticker is MCD, McDonald's, MCD. Some of them are very exotic, by the way. And there's McDonald's. You would have to pay to buy one share of their stock. You'd have to pay $153.74. Okay, I can look at this and I can see um, how much they tr they, their stock changed in the preceding day. It opened at 152.52 and it closed a little bit lower. It looks like about uh, 209, looks like about 13 cents lower. Okay, it tells you how many shares were traded. I'll get into some of these other terms later. It's telling you that it does pay a dividend of $3.76 per year. Okay, again, some of these other terms we'll get to later. They've got really nice chart dynamics, okay? I'm looking at the last trading day for, uh, Coca uh, for McDonald's, I'm sorry. And if I wanted to see five days, I can click on 5D. You can see that uh, I think Coca-Cola has been having some pretty good days, uh, in actually a pretty good day since last Thursday. They went from 150 up to 153, okay? And you'll notice wherever I put the cursor, that little dot is gonna tell me exactly where the price was. You can take it out for a year if you want. So again, Yahoo.com is very, very powerful. Wouldn't it be nice to have bought McDonald's right there at 111 and then see that a year later it's gone up, less than a year later, it's gone up to 153, okay? But that's 2020 hindsight. So that's a little intro to Yahoo Finance and that is the service that I use. So take a couple of companies, look up your favorite company, give it a shot, okay? All right, very good. We move on. Okay, um, there are certain metrics that we use. Uh, those are what you'll see in the average stock listing. Um, I thought I put one in the book, I guess I did not, okay? But I just showed you enough of one, I think, to get a rough idea. An average stock listing is gonna tell you uh, wh where the stock is trading as of the most recent trade where it started yesterday and where it ended yesterday, the most recent uh, trading period, it'll give you 52 weeks. It'll say where the low and the high were for uh, a year. It's gonna tell you whether the stock is paying a dividend or not, and if so, how much, okay? Some other places besides yahoo.com, you can go to WSJ, the Wall Street Journal. Uh, you can hook up live streaming feeds, okay? That will constantly tell you how your stock is changing. I don't invest like that. I invest for the long haul, not for quick ins and outs of the market. So I tend not to do that. And I love charts too. I love things that are expressed pictorially. If you want to get yourself an annual report, if a company is publicly traded, you can get your hands on that, usually right off the company's own website. Okay, JNJ, if you want Johnson & Johnson, a company I love, if you want their report, go to jnj.com and scroll around so you see something that says annual report or uh, public filings or investor relations, you'll find it, okay? And if you can't, because admittedly some websites, uh, you know, they're pretty hard to navigate, you finally throw up your hands in disgust and say, is there one place I can go for all publicly traded companies? Yeah, it's the SEC's own website, Securities Exchange Commission, okay? They're the police persons of, of many things, many different acts of Congress, uh, most re recently Sarbanes-Oxley, uh, but they are the police persons of the stock market. I highly recommend the movie Wall Street, the original one with, um, uh, with Michael Douglas, Charlie Sheen, Daryl Hannah. Uh, it's a great, great movie. Um, and I love it because of great writing, great acting, but especially because it's the closest I've ever seen a movie come to how things really happen on the street, okay? I don't want to give it away, but at the end of the movie, some really nasty-looking people with guns and handcuffs take away Charlie Sheen for breaking a few of the rules. That is the SEC, the Securities Exchange Commission, okay? In financial accounting, you learn that the Financial Accounting Standards Board establishes GAAP, General Accepted Accounting Principles. The SEC, they're the folks really in charge. They have the final say about GAAP, but they have better things to do, like catching Charlie Sheen, so they have delegated that task to the FASB, as you learned. 
the FASB, but really the SEC are the ones with the final say. Their website to look up any annual report or 10K is called edgar.com. EDGAR is an acronym. I've long forgotten what it stands for, but that's the SEC site. And if a company is publicly traded, you're going to find their information there. You don't invest without looking at a company's information ever, ever, ever. Always do your homework. That's the right way and the only way, ladies and gentlemen, to invest. Okay? All right. Um, very good. I'm moving over now to page 70. Okay. Let's stop for one minute. I need to show you something very quickly. Okay. On page 73, there are two metrics I'm going to want you to know. The price to earnings ratio and the earnings per share. Okay. Earnings per share, if you didn't learn this in financial accounting, EPS as it's known, is found by taking the bottom line from the income statement uh, minus any preferred dividends. We only worry about, worry about common stock. Okay? And we go to the balance sheet and look up how many shares are outstanding. And I'm going to explain that in a moment to you. You divide the profit, net profit, from the income statement after preferred dividends by the number of outstanding common shares, and that gives you EPS. Please know how to do that for me. Secondly, once you have that number, you can establish what we call the price to earnings ratio. Take the price that's just being traded now for stock, like we saw 156 bucks for Mickey D's, and divide that price per share by the earnings per share, and that gives you the price to earnings ratio. That usually indicates, that usually falls rather somewhere in the teens for high quality blue chip type companies, and that's an indication of how enthusiastic uh, the market feels about buying a piece of the profits of a company, okay? So please understand the earnings per share and the price to earnings ratio they're described for you on page 73. Okay, we've got some terms I'll start looking into quickly before I have to break off here. Um, I pulled Mac McDonald's balance sheet for the year 2012. I looked at their equity section and it said this. It said common stock. One cent par value, authorized 3.5 billion shares, issued 1 million, I'm sorry, 1 billion 660 million shares. Common stock in treasury at cost, 657.9 million shares. What do those numbers mean? GAAP requires that language be there. Okay? Let's start by explaining par value, and I think that's all I'll have time for today. Okay? Par value. Uh, is a very low nominal number that when a company is applying to have its to the Secretary of State to have stock issued, they want permission from the state to issue stock for the first time, they select an, an arbitrary but very, very low PA value. Not every state out of the 50 is a PA value state. You don't have to do it in some states. In Mass, I believe you do it in Massachusetts. But you're going to pick a really, really low number. In this case, it's a penny for McDonald's. That number, unless you're an accountant or a lawyer, is relatively meaningless. Okay? What goes on and what goes, what's the entry you make for your balance sheet when you issue stock? It's going to be the full amount of cash that comes in and the full amount of equity to match it. But if you're an accountant, you remember, you might remember, you split that between PA value and additional paid in capital. Now, this is not an accounting course. The only thing I want you to know in my course about PA value is the reason we pick a very low number for it. It's because old laws on the books of PA value states generally will say that if the company's equity falls below its PA value, that's why you want to pick a low number, then the state can essentially step in and take over the affairs of the company because that indicates the company is in very serious trouble. And the state wants to protect shareholders using what they refer to as blue sky laws. So that's why companies will pick a very low pop value. I think when Zuckerberg took his company public, I think he picked a, an even lower fraction of a cent, something like that. Okay? That's what PA value is. GAAP requires that if a company is in a PA value state, that they state it in their equity section right below, right below the value they put on their common stock. Okay? That's our first term. All right. These next three I'm going to need you to know. Stock is in the common stock section. 
in the preferred stock section can be defined as authorized, issued, or outstanding. Okay? In my next vid lecture, I'll get into what those three things mean. If you want to get ahead of me a little bit, it's all on pages 74 and 75, so I'll be posting another one of, one of these things very soon. So be watching. I'm going to be giving you a lot of rapid-fire stuff because I will not be uh, in communication with you from Thursday, June 6th through early Sunday, the 11th. So I really do have to uh, maintain that pace. So you will be seeing a lot more uh, in the way of postings from me in the very near future. In the meantime, take care. Bye-bye.